The time has come for the main event of the evening, 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, live from Atlantic City, it is fight time! Introducing to you first on my left, he is fighting out of the blue corner, entering the ring wearing white trunks, hailing from and representing his home of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at 220 pounds. His record stands at 38 wins, five losses, two draws, with 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Having held the heavyweight title and unequaled four times, he is known as one of boxing's great warriors. Currently ranked the number two IBF contender, here is the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion and the former four-time heavyweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Evander, the real deal. opponent across the ring on my right, ready to fight out of the red corner, wearing blue trunks, fighting out of Las Vegas, Nevada by way of Flint, Michigan. He weighed in at a ready 214 pounds with a record of 34 wins and two losses. He has 19 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former WBO heavyweight world champion, the current IBF number one ranked heavyweight. Here is the classy top contender introducing Chris Bird. And once again, a referee in charge, Randy Newman, now to give instructions. Okay, gentlemen, you're both familiar with the rules. We've gone over them. I want you to remember two things. Obey my commands. Most importantly, defend yourselves at all times. Now shake hands and come out of the bell. Many casual fans who don't know much about Chris Bird, and even some serious fans who do, will be surprised, if not shocked, that at the last call in Las Vegas, Bird is more than a two to one favorite tonight. There's more than 5,000 fans here tonight, also. A lot more. A lot of paper in the house, too, George. <laughs> Crowd rising in energy as Randy Newman prepares to summon the fighters to the center of the ring, and here they come. If you haven't seen Bird before, instantly see the Southpaw dance. Holyfield has had three previous fights against Southpaws in his professional career. Two of them, of course, in the heavyweight division against Michael Moore. Won one, lost one. Bird, an entirely different kind of fighter than Moore, though. Not a power puncher like the former heavyweight champ who was knocked out by George Foreman. Bird has got to get in there and show sometime at some point or another that he can punch, stand up to these big guys and get a knockdown. Don't just be counted on the run and get out of the way and duck. That's what he should do tonight. Step up to the bat. Evander Holyfield has got to make certain that he don't allow this guy, uh, he doesn't allow this guy to move to his right. He's very weak on his right side. He seems not to be able to see shots over there. On Holyfield's right side. Holyfield's right side is very weak. If so in other words, right, if, Bird, if Bird moves to his left, he's going to the side where Holyfield has trouble defending him. That's right, and Holyfield can't seem to, he's not caught, lost coordination on that side for some reason. Meanwhile, Bird starts out moving in exactly the opposite direction, rotating from left to right, and slams Holyfield with a straight left hand. And that's good. Holyfield's got to get busy. You got to make certain this guy's elbows are never out, overextended. Keep those elbows sharp. Caps you close. Bird lands a straight left hand. Holyfield lands a left hook on Bird against the ropes. Evander, for his part, says, I must focus on the body. When you miss against Bird, you tend to miss upstairs. And it wears you out when you miss big shots against him. My idea, says Evander, go to his body and just try to keep my hands on him. But he's going upstairs and missing. 
Well, that's not so bad for him upstairs because Bird is not that tall. He's been up uh, missing guys who are a lot taller. This time he's going to land a lot more shots than he normally does with the taller guys. to make certain that those are not backhands with that right jab that Bird is throwing. Backhand well, it's a fine line. Down. It's a fine line because he lays it out there more or less with the hand open, and Bird is such a soft puncher. I mean, he's, he's really trying most of the time simply to make some impact. But he's thrown more hard punches in this round than he normally does, particularly earlier in the fight. Holyfield got in his best punch to the body so far, a left hook to the ribcage under Bird's right elbow. And that's Evander Holyfield's best punch, if you ask me, that left hook to the back. Totally agree. Holyfield trying to make the counter puncher come to him. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Drives Bird to the ropes. Bird ducks another punch as the round comes to a close. Holyfield lands a right toward the end of the round. You wonder if that will influence the scoring of that round. Very difficult rounds to score. Incidentally, you saw Chris Bird's mother and father in the corner with him between rounds. Brother Patrick also plays a role in there. Mother Rose, Father Joe, fixtures in the bird corner. CompuBox numbers in round one. Holyfield only six of 29 by CompuBox estimate. Bird 13 out of 47. Yet Harold Letterman, perhaps influenced by that sharp right hand toward the end, elected to give the round to Evander. I gave it to Bird. Well, a lot of these rounds figure to be tough to score. The judge Letterman has been pretty much right on the number these days. It's hard to go against him. Bird sticking the jab. Holyfield still trying to determine exactly what he wants to do against Bird. He's trying to make him come forward. Yeah, that's make interesting, isn't it? Shot. And here comes Holyfield lashing out and hitting Bird with a right hand to the jab. Yeah, elaborate on this, George, because yeah, it looks as though he's trying to, to lull the counterpunch. Counterpunchers love to make you miss first, and then they hit you with something. That's what you got to do is make them throw something, then start countering on them occasionally, and you make them give it up. So Holyfield is purposely staying back and trying to lure Bird to him. Right, counter punches love to duck. The best one will tell you, I'll do it. Let me duck first. A good straight left by Bird that time. Bird popping and spinning, popping and spinning. If you Holyfield, you don't want him to get that kind of courage to just stand there and just don't do anything. You got to touch him. If nothing else. Field short with the winging right. Bird still just popping the jab, popping the jab, little straight left hand, just trying to get his hands onto Evander and yeah. score. Bird's corner told him, look, keep stay in the middle of the ring. He can't get you out there. And Holyfield needs that close to the ropes to land two shots to Bird. Misses him if he's out in the middle, but if he's close to the rope, he's gonna land that one-two combination. And that was a rope, and he didn't do anything. distance between Bird and Evander fighting this way. At some point, does Holyfield have to get closer, George? He's got to keep the fight close at all times. Bird does not like close fighting. Yeah, but the thing is, Holyfield's trying to fight, not his fight. This is not the kind of fight that Evander Holyfield has ever fought before, as long as I can remember, of trying to, to go on a defensive and lure the other fighter into him consistently. Well, he's always been in with the bigger guys who's attacking him anyway. So it's pretty much what he likes you to come after him. He'll beat you up. He just doesn't go after people as well. 
love for you to try him. I mean, this is a very big round for Bird. Yes, in the second round, Holyfield has looked too passive, too hesitant, and Bird break, has been break, able to score. Go. This Tuesday on Real Sports, Bryant Gumble goes head to head with Martha Burke, leading the campaign to allow women as members at Augusta National, home of the Masters. The good old days are gone from Augusta. And as soon as they face that, they're going to be better off, and golf will be better off. And December 27, on the record with Bob Costas, returns with a special edition, looking back at 2002 and speaking with some of the top newsmakers of the year. Serena and others. CompuBox numbers in round two. Look at that. Holyfield throwing 14 and by CompuBox estimate landing one. That was the right hand to the heart. Bird 21 out of 59, 36%. So just as I say that the rounds would be difficult to score, you get an open and shut case. But this fight could change several times, it seems to me, as Holyfield explores tactics against Bird. Bird is no longer throwing the kind of little pity pat feather duster punches he used to. He may not be throwing big heavy punches, but he's throwing sharp punches. Now Holyfield is starting to get a little more activity going. Looks like he wants to go to war a little bit, George. Yeah, you just can't land the hard shots. Just settle for the mid-range shots just to make certain that you touch this guy. One, two, three, four, five. Let the rough say break. Evander, two right hands upstairs, two digging left hooks to the body. Another digging left hook to the body. Now, Evander Holyfield is fighting the right kind of fight, but you don't want to be throwing too much energy away with the power. He's fighting them the correct way, but too much energy in those shots. That you got to step back and breathe once you do that. It was interesting on the ropes how Bird held his gloves up around his head to avoid Holyfield's head. I think he was trying to avoid Holyfield's punches. Well, maybe that maybe too. Both. Hey, maybe both, guys. You know, it, it, it makes sense. Bird himself said that he didn't want to focus in any way, shape, or form on the question of whether Holyfield butts. He'll leave that to the referee and just try to box it. Holyfield does for the allowing Bird to box, relax when he wants. He just can't do that. And there's the first headbutt of the fight. It's a fight. Let's go. And Bird turns to Randy Newman and says, do something. The old guy using his head. His back is against the rope. You've got to hit him. you just got to hit him. Is this the kind of fight that Evander Holyfield was worried about when he said he didn't want to fight a guy with this style, George? Yeah, because this guy lifts his right hand up every now and then, doesn't do anything, keeps you ducking and dodging, and it makes you look foolish once you decide, I'm going to hit him. Good left right to the punch belly. by Bird. Outstanding left to the belly, right in the, right in the center of the gut. Now Holyfield is out there. Whenever Bird throws his, his right, Holyfield has got to throw his right. You just can't wait and try to jab with him. Make it a dance. Well, after a first minute of aggression, Evander Holyfield seemed to go back into that shell don't, for the remaining two minutes of just the keep round. Cutting, keep working your head. You got to run that hand. Try to frustrate him. He, he uses his head like crazy. Yeah, don't get down in there. You know you're going to use his head. In the paper about that. Give me a towel. Don't let him get his head in oh, there. Oh, yeah. Okay? Don't let that head in there. So you letting the head get in. Don't go on the rope. Keep him in the center right. He lost that there. He can't get his head in the center right. Let me come back you up. Or there's no need for you backing up. Punch and combinations, baby. That's all you got to do. Get close. Look easy. Punch it. There's the first clash of heads as Holyfield comes in aggressively. 
trying to get into the chest of Bird. And there's that straight left body punch by Bird. And you heard the conversation between Chris Bird and his dad about Evander Holyfield's head. Harold, how do you have the first three? <laughs> okay, Jim, 29-28, two rounds to one, Chris Bird. Jim, let me tell you something about scoring this fight. You know, basically speaking, I always say that the most important factor judging a round is clean, effective punching. When you're judging a Van der Holyfield fight, basically what you're trying to figure out is who's doing more damage. In round one, when a Van der Linde does big shots at the end of the round, he did more damage in the round. But two and three clearly bird rounds. One other thing about the rules, you're not allowed to spin a guy. If you spin a guy and you hit him, then the referee should take away a point. Holyfield getting in another digging left hook to the body and getting Bird's attention with that right hand body shot as well. Bird is real good at spinning, but he's not one of these foul guys. After he spins, he never tries to hit you. That's good about it. Chris Bird is, he's certainly got the personality and the temperament of a great sportsman. There's no bigger fan of boxing among all boxers in the world than Chris Bird, as was evidenced partially by the fact that he was there at ringside last Saturday night to watch Vladimir Klitschko and Jamil McLean one week removed from coming here to fight Evander Holyfield. He's just a fan who can't resist the sport. That's why he's learned how to operate with that style he has. It's awkward. He knows it's awkward. When you get a guy who stands back and wait for you, you can beat him all night. And that's what Evander Holyfield is doing wrong tonight, standing back waiting. Well, the story's been told many times of how Bird and his brothers were trained to box in an 11 foot by 14 foot basement room. Now Evander's picked up his right hand lead. There it goes. Got to bring that right to the look closer to your left and start leading with the right hand. Interesting shift in momentum here. Holyfield getting Bird's attention with body punches. And he's hitting him in the chest too. That's a good shot for Evander. Vanders Corners better tell him after those break rough tell you to break, you gotta be the first one to get back on the guy. Don't let him be the first one. Hard left hand from Bird, hard right hand from Holyfield. Now Bird popping the jab right onto a Vanders chin. Very accurate punching there by Chris Bird. And stiff jabs. Holyfield finding that to hit Bird in the head is like trying to catch a butterfly with tweezers. It's very, very hard. Well, the very last easy if you take the power off the shot. Stop trying to hit him with a big shot. And Holyfield gets in four shots to punctuate the round after Bird had spent the previous minute beating Evander to the punch. Tracy Bird, wife of Chris. Mother of three, looking on from ringside, like her husband, huge fan of the sport. There's one of the bird progeny. Only one old enough to come to the fights. Looks worried. Yeah, don't let him do that to you, the lads. He's trying to steal around the whole Ali's mouth and the Oh, you're hooking away to where it works, okay? Clean up the water when you're done. Yes, sir. Oh, you're you hooking away it works. Okay. Soft hook, hard right hand. Quick. Soft, quick, quick, quick. Bing, 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 bing. Four tactical rounds in the books. All of them interesting. Ebb and flow, shifting tides of fortune. Evander Holyfield with a 12 to 8 CompuBox edge and power connects in that last round. Several of those connects within the last 10 seconds of the round. That referee is staying right out of the way. I like those kind of referees. Let the fighters make the shot. Well, it's Randy Newman, a former heavyweight himself. Holyfield's corner told him to tap with the hook, straight right hand. He's still throwing it powerfully like that. Well, that's because Bird frustrates opponents. And when they get within range, they can't resist trying to 
overcome their frustration and hit them a hard punch. But with a, a boxer like Evander Holyfield with that kind of experience, you got to know to take direction from your corner. You this bird is backing Evander Holyfield up. What is that? Well, it's not a backup. It's going in a circle, as you see. Okay. A circle. The old square circle is it. But he's not getting away from Bird's jab, which Bird is just sticking into his face over and over and over. Because it's kind of a backhand punch there. Yep. I guess the ref just doesn't want to get into it now, but at some point or another, you want to check him with that backhand. Uh, break around of there. Step back. You're saying it's not a legal blow unless he balls the fist and hits him with a bunch yeah, of gloves. Occasionally he does it correctly, then he switches off the backhand like that. Almost happened then. Well, what he what he used to do is a kind of slap boxing, George. He's closing his fist some, but he's not throwing punches with mean intentions, but he's throwing sharp punches like that. He's landed virtually every significant punch in this round. Holyfield is just looking for one hard shot. That's the way you don't want to fight these counter punches, looking for one shot. Got to throw five of them. Tap, 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 tap. Got him on the corner. Right hand raised bird. That one also a glancing blow. The body shots are landing. Now he gets a right hand in upstairs. Left hand to the body was a solid blow. Right hand on the top of the head. Bird decides to throw back. Holyfield laying in and attacking. Now he lets him be the first one back. That's the mistake Holyfield keeps making. He allows Bird to be the first one back after these exchanges. He's got to be first. Takes energy to do that. Yeah, but you just got to suck it up and get some energy here. Holyfield comes forward with his head and catches Bird on the point of the chin with the top of his head after Bird had landed two or three straight punches. Bird popping and popping. Holyfield had the one big rally, but the rest of the round was Chris Bird sticking the jab. Green. Put the water in the Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. All you gotta do is take charge. Be first, be first. A little water, just a little bit. Right. Okay, no water. You get so this take. Remember the last few seconds now. Don't get, Don't on, get on them ropes. Here, Holyfield has a moment on the ropes trying to bully Bird. How effective is he? It's almost like trying to pick up a wet bar of soap in the shower because he is just so slippery. Copy box numbers in round five. Bird 19 out of 57. Holyfield 11 out of only 27. The heavyweight average for punches thrown in a round is 47. Holyfield hasn't gotten there yet or anywhere near it in any of these rounds as he hunts and becks and looks for opportunities against Chris Bird. And George, for a while there, you said he was looking to land one big shot. He's going against a guy who's made his whole career out of never catching that one big shot. And because he's in with bigger guys, bigger guys think, hey, I can beat you, you can't punch, and they go for the big shot. You gotta just make yourself a little guy like he faced as a middleweight. Just imagine yourself as a middleweight and throw shots. It's effective. No, just try to throw them hard. You can't miss it. If you're Evander Holyfield. You mentioned Bird's only two losses. He himself says he made a mistake against Ike Biabuchi and got caught with a punch that he shouldn't have been hit with. But he says that Vladimir Klitschko noticeably shortened up his punches for the purpose of just connecting with Bird, and he said that was a good strategy on Vladimir's part. Yeah, well, a lot of people were down on Vladimir Klitschko uh, last week because of that disappointing fight against an opponent who didn't come to fight. But just imagine that he took 11 out of 12 rounds from Bird and knocked him down twice and just beat him up badly. Holyfield looking for opportunities here in the sixth. And there's a low flip. Let's go. The 
ref is saying, I'll let you guys box, I'll let you guys fight, I'm gonna stay out of the way, but don't go low, <laughs> don't rabbit punch. Bird sticking the jab, sticking the jab. Straight left hand, beating Holyfield to the punch, over and over. Holyfield waiting again. When Bird goes to the body, that's insurance that Holyfield will not be strong in the last three rounds. Not only is he boxing him, but he's going to the body, which is very wise. off the fight for Holyfield, but he took punches in return to get it in. Holyfield's corner told him to be first. Get back and be first. That's the first time he's done it. Fighting against the southpaw, Holyfield goes straight right hand, straight right hand, straight right hand. You can't miss it. Bird goes straight left hand and shows that the opposite is true as well. Through half this fight, Bird has made the Vander Holyfield look about 50. Hey, Larry, I'm 50. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> January 16 on HBO Latino. Look for the premiere of a new series called Boxeo de Oro, presented and promoted by the not 50 Oscar Del Hoya. <laughs> this monthly boxing series will feature up and coming Hispanic fighters. The first show, Jose Navarro against Carlos Madrigal and Oscar Larios against Marcos Licona. And then January 25, World Championship Boxing is back. With welterweight champ Vernon Forrest, Shane Mosley's nemesis, taking on belt holder Ricardo Mayorga. Rough customer. Also, the long-anticipated fight between cruiserweight champ Vasily Giroff and former middleweight champion James Tony. Saturday, Jan 25, that's our next HBO World Championship Boxing show. Halfway through 12-round fight, in the sixth round, Holyfield by CompuBox estimate threw 18 punches and Bird threw 61, landing 12 of 49 jabs. Harold, how do you have it through six? <laughs> okay, Jim, five rounds to one, 59, 55, Chris Bird. Jim, I just think he's jabbing him to death with that right jab, but I gotta tell you something about the rules. George Foreman said something very interesting. You're not allowed to open the boxing glove, just like George told you. You gotta keep it closed. Now, at times, when Bird, leaves, when Bird throws that right jab, he, he opens the glove. Now, Randy Newman should warn him about that. If he keeps opening the glove, you take away your point. Under the rules, you must must keep the right, the uh, glove closed. Well, you know, I think it's abundantly clear by now that Randy Newman isn't going to warn him for opening the glove, despite the fact that he continues to do it. Well, when it, when it lands on Foreman's head, the glove closes. You mean on Holyfield's head? On Holyfield's head. And if he comes Sorry, over, George. If 50, he comes 50, over 50. and punches Foreman, it'll probably <laughs> close there, too. Right, step back. Let me have the swap. <laughs> Does this remind you just a little bit of Jimmy Young and you, George? I hate to bring it up, <laughs> but Jimmy Young was a right-handed version of Chris Berg. I think Chris Berg is in the league of his own. That fight, George Foreman against Jimmy Young, was March 17, 1977 in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Memorable night. Launched George Foreman into the next incarnation of his ex existence, which was out of boxing for 10 years. And then he came back. What a story. Beat the devil out of him. <laughs> Evander is allowing this guy to just relax and do whatever he wants. Trying to counter punch or counter punch you. You well, just can't of, do it. One of the discussions before the fight was reflexes. You have to have great reflexes to fight a quick counter puncher like Bird, and does Evander still have that? No, you can't fight him with reflexes. You got to fight him with momentum. You got to get your chest right, right there on his, on your head right there on his chest. Keep it there all night and throw some kind of punches. Why is he not doing it? I don't understand. What kind of training has he had? No, I don't think that's it at all. I just think Evander can fight the big heavyweights because they don't move a lot. He can find a strategy against this. This guy, he just looks old, just isn't there. You know, in a way, it's a, it's a heavyweight version of the lightweight fight we saw last week between Mayweather and Castillo. Um, 
but it's more interesting because of the, the great personality and great fighter that Evander Holyfield is in America. And you're saying that just as Mayweather was too quick and slick for Castillo, therefore Bird is too quick and slick for Holyfield. And he's throwing, he's even throwing harder punches than Mayweather did last week. And Holyfield looks discouraged as he goes to his corner. You okay? Yeah, I'm okay. You're fine. You gotta get close. You gotta get close and you gotta punch. Throw straight punches. Don't throw the hook. Straight in front of him. Bing, bing, bing. Get close and throw him straight. Tim, you let him know there's something wrong with his left shoulder. Don't do that. If you're gonna do it, put it on the front. Water. A couple of things in Holyfield's corner. One, they're putting ice on his shoulder. And secondly, he didn't sit down in the corner for the first time in the fight. What reason could there be for that, George? Second round, he hasn't sat down. Yeah. International feed for uh, Don King overseas being announced by veteran blow-by-blow -blow announcer Bob Sheridan, also called the Colonel, and one Lennox Lewis who uh, accepted $1 million from Don King as step-aside money not to fight Bird, along with a Range Rover, and uh, as part of that deal is participating in, in honoring and being a part of the public presentation of the two fights that King has paired together, this and Jones Ruiz. We'll try to talk to Lennox later. Round eight begins with more bird popping at Holyfield from long distance. And we heard Don Turner, Holyfield's trainer, saying, you got to get close. You got to get close. And you got to have heart. And that's what he's losing now. Going to his corner twice and has not sit down on the, on the stool. Generally, when a fighter starts off sitting down on the stool and doesn't go back, something is wrong. He's discouraged. He looks like a lot of guys have looked in the late rounds after having been flummoxed by Chris Bird. And now Bird is starting to smile and laugh. Van just turned softball. And that's what that's what Bird was smiling and laughing about, obviously. Yep, you're right. There's the southpaw stance. I don't recall Evander doing that. He probably has somewhere in his career. But this seems like an act of desperation. He's gotten discouraged. Very discouraged. He's looking for better punching angles. He told us that he would hope that he could get Bird to square up shoulder to shoulder against him. That's only happened two or three times. Well, you saw what he had in mind. He tried to, to trick Bird into range for a big left hook. It grazed or just missed Bird. And now he goes back to his conventional style. If only Chris Bird could punch, he could end this fight. For all we know, George, the fight may be over. What a feather it would be in Bird's cap if, if a guy regarded as a non-puncher knocked out of Andrew Holyfield, who's regarded as having one of the greatest chins ever. And that's the way you fight these guys. Don't throw big punches, just win every round. That's what Evander should have been doing with Chris Bird all, Bird all along. Stop trying to win the guy, knock him out, win rounds. Bird, from time to time, embarrassing Holyfield with his greater quickness in there. That's that backhand with that straight backhand again. I mean, yep. slap backhand. As I good. said, he's going to get away with that. Randy Newman is not going to stop that. Right hand landed over the top. Bird kind of looked down disgustedly as if, how did I let myself get hit? You see how easy it is to hit him with a shot? A bird to get tagged when you don't throw power. Well, and if you go to the body instead of to the head, too. I don't think it's easy at all. Because if, if it would be easy, Evander would have found out a way to do it by well, now. He just does not believe in throwing little shots, man. He lands a right uppercut as Bird gets brave and comes in. Holyfield momentarily landed the uppercut, but all in all, another one-sided, largely Bird round, at least to our eyes. How you feel? You feel all right? How about that? Now you're going into the deep water now. So you got to really you got to really make him work. He, he done taught every way. He, he done lost everything now. He tried to go south. He got out. desperate now. Yep. You got so he the last three seconds. You have to watch seconds. it. That's the fighter. That's he. Punch. Don't wait for him. Punch. Bang. 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 
got to throw. Make yourself a commitment to get close. You ain't close. got no game here if you don't. You got to throw. For me, get close and stay close. Stay close to him. This is uh, Chris Bird's version of a bird in hand. And the bird in hand for him is a Vander Holyfield. Well, if it were a jabbing contest, they'd stop it. In the eighth round, Holyfield landed one of 11 jabs by CompuBox estimate. Bird, 18 out of 50. And you saw the numbers that showed that Holyfield, by CompuBox estimate, has landed only three jabs in the whole fight. Of course, it's hard to do it against Southpaws. It's particularly hard to do it against this one. That bird is as foxy as they get. Got his eyes wide open. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Bird takes the shot pretty well. I mean, you, you gotta be hoping you can turn it around with one punch against him, and if he takes a punch well, how are you gonna do that? Holyfield just starts to get a little rhythm where he bobs to the, moves to his left and throws his hook, moves to his right, throws his right hand. Bird is just carving Evander Holyfield up like a Christmas turkey. Operating at a high level of concentration. Bird jabs him right to the chest, too. Those punches hurt, takes your power away from your jab, does everything you don't want to have done to you. Holyfield finally gets him squared up. Lands one right hand, might have been partially blocked by Bird's glove. to the body. Bird goes into that peekaboo act. I'm here, but I'm not here. Holyfield is just trying to get in one desperate shot. That's all. No longer try to win. One desperate. When you get desperate like that, that's when you get hurt. I asked Evander if during their early days with main events he ever got into the ring with Pernell Whitaker. He said, no, he never actually tried to spar with Whitaker. That would have been too frustrating for him. He may feel after tonight as though he's been in the ring with Pernell Whitaker. That's right. Weighing in a little heavier. Though. Look at Bird laughing and smiling at us as he pops Evander at the same time. Evander just trying to rip everything he can with those left hooks. Crowd starting to warm the bird a little bit. This guy's been allowed to rest all he wants. Chris Bird said it would be an easy fight. So far it is. What you gotta do. Every time you get close, you're in the ball game. You gotta punch him. Combination. This guy with one hand all night long. Right here, right here. You're gonna get your feet up there, get close enough so the shoulder don't hurt and let him go. You don't have any time to wait. That's just the bottom line, brother. You got it. It's up to you. Whatever you do, we love and respect you. But you don't have any more any more rounds to give away. That's just all there is to do. Give away nothing. Right now, you need to think like an amateur, and you got three rounds to think like an amateur. Two rounds right. rounds left. That's right. Like you did in nine minutes, brother. Come on. Come on, Come on champ. Come on, champ. Come on. Amateur. Do what you do best, man. Fight. Do what you do best. Go for it. CompuBox estimate in round nine, Bird threw 52 jabs and landed 14, 70 total punches in the round. Evander Holyfield throwing a total of 27 punches according to CompuBox and landing eight. These numbers are mind-numbingly one-sided at this point. Harold, how about your scorecard? Okay, Chip, eight rounds to one, 89, 82, Chris Bird just jabbing him to death with that right hand. I wonder if the official scorecards won't be closer. 
You see Bird is doing this, is jabbing this guy to his chest and in the side of his arms. So even, even his jab will not be effective anymore. He's taking everything away from Evander Holyfield. Power, discouraged him, and everything. Well, we've often talked about this, George, it, and made it would appear the boxing match has been decided. So it would be up to Holyfield at this point to get in there and try to make it a fight. I don't think he can do anything. He's allowed this guy to jab him in the chest area too much. He's not, he doesn't have that power anymore. This guy's just sucked it away from him like a syringe. If he'd only been just throwing head shots, it'd been a different story. Holyfield trying to sledgehammer Bird with body shots. Hit him low. Let's get him up. And Randy Newman says you hit him low. Hey, watching what you're watching here, George, do you suspect Lennox Lewis didn't want to fight Bird solely because he thought the public wasn't interested in the fight? Or do you suspect he wanted to stay away from that style? Yeah, well, it's been the whole history of boxing. You stay away from southpaws, stay away from southpaws who can box. This is something odd to have one of these guys in a title position like that. The other side of it is that if Chris Bird goes on to win this fight in what could be a virtual shutout, he then becomes a more important potential opponent for Lewis. Remember, the big guys are the ones who have given Bird the trouble. He was behind seven rounds to two to Vitaly Klitschko when he uh, retired with a shoulder injury. He lost 11 out of 12 rounds to Vladimir Klitschko. And Ibeabuchi, who scored a KO over him, was 240 pounds plus himself. Right hand grazes Bird. Holyfield digs the left hook to the body. His very best punches have been his left hook to the body, and that follows the book. It's been Evander's best punch his whole career. Bird just knocking him back with straight punches again. Evander trying to counter with one big shot. Bird got hurt that time. Don't let him do that to you. Don't let him do that. This Tuesday, look for Real Sports with Brian Gumbel. Among the stories, a profile of the Maloof brothers. I'm reading here, they're rich beyond belief. They own one of Las Vegas' hottest casinos, plus the Sacramento Kings, and they're bachelors to boot. What is it, a bachelor segment? No, it's... Real Sports, December 27 on the record with Bob Costas returns with a special edition, looking back at 2002 with some of the year's newsmakers. Serena, do you want to act? Yeah, I've been actually doing a lot of acting. I have a, I have a Hollywood agent. <laughs> I'm really serious. I have a coach. <laughs> I know everybody's laughing. <laughs> I'm just laughing because you're laughing. <laughs> now, Vander Holyfield isn't laughing. That may have been his most effective round, the last of that round. He yeah, if you were bird. looking for a round, if you were judging, you were looking for a round to give to Holyfield, that would have been the one, because he landed some crunching punches toward the end of the round. Copy box numbers through 10. Holyfield, 72 out of 250, 29%. Bird, 192 out of 589, 33%. More than doubling Holyfield's punch output. That's the big number there. Holyfield gets rough with this guy, starts throwing those hard shots. Better do it now. He can be rough. Well, six minutes to go. Whatever Evander's got, I'm sure his corner has asked him for it. Well, he's asking himself for it. Is it there? He had Bird hanging on there at the last of that round. Now he can just go back to where he left off. Holyfield gets Bird cornered, catches him with the right hand. Make Chris Bird the way a big puncher like Ibeabuchi did when he caught him on the ropes in Tacoma. Bird's got to step up and fight this man. Don't run him away anymore. That's what he's Back doing. Back him up. Back him up. That's what he's doing right here. 
Burns trying to make a retaliatory statement at this moment. And I think if he just put together some hard shots, he'll be happy about this round. Just put some power on him. Make him respect you. If he doesn't respect you, make him respect you. Well, Evander has emerged from his discouragement and has gone back to fighting up tempo, so it's up to Bird to try to reintroduce him to that discouraged frame of mind. That's what you gotta do, but put a little power in there. Combination. It was Bird who initiated that hug. I know you're rooting for Evander, George, but he's a no hooper right now. Who are you rooting for, Larry? I'm I'm just looking at the fight. All right, then. I why, have, why I do have, you think I'm <laughs> Because I'm you keep telling what? us what Evander I'm telling you do. what I see. Okay. I'm not pulling for anyone. I like both of these guys. I mean, I want you want to see Holyfield do his best and do better. I want the fans to see the best. We all do. We all do, but it doesn't look like anything is there. Yeah, he's he got him a few shots. You he's have trying. to bleed. You're gonna have to catch some shots, but there's not a hard right hand by Holyfield. Never over in a boxing match. Never over. Andy catches Bird with a left hook, and once again, Bird is rocked by the impact of these punches as he was at the end of the last round. And he tries to turn around and retaliate. And Evander catches him with another big shot. Chris Bird got caught with three huge shots in the last 15 seconds of that round. And now we'll see if Holyfield can capitalize on that in the 12th. My guess, it's his last hurrah. Step in there with a straight left and get a knockdown. So I'm in the heavyweight pitch. Lennox Lewis couldn't knock Evander Holyfield down. It'd be shocking if Chris Bird could. Bird seems for the moment to have stemmed the tide of the Holyfield rally in rounds 10 and 11. He's gone back to beating Evander to the punch and fighting him in the center of the ring. Yeah, it takes a lot of energy to do what Evander is doing. 
thrown a lot of hard shots. I mean, it takes energy. He's even connecting with that left hook to the body on the southpaw. There it's were times in the in fight when Evander it. seemed to be trying to conserve his energy. He's let it hang out a lot more in the last couple of rounds. The now for it. Now, for it. Come on. now it's time to see the fight. Holyfield was one of the last active fighters to actually participate in a 15-round fight early in his career against Dwight Muhammad Kawi. Maybe if he had three more rounds tonight, but he doesn't. He didn't end the fight running away, Bird did. He ended the fight fighting. Let's keep in mind, Evander Holyfield has a record of 10 and 0 in Atlantic City. He is the star. He is Evander Holyfield. He's so you're saying that you won't be surprised if these scorecards are considerably closer than the one Harold has kept during the fight. Yep. Is that right, Larry? You got that right. I wouldn't be surprised either. I think none of us would be surprised if these scorecards are closer. And the good thing about it, these fighters signed with Dunn King and they're always in the title picture. There's no promoter who can produce like that. A look back at highlights from throughout the fight. Chris Bird's effective aggression as continually he stepped forward through the jab. Beat Evander Holyfield to the punch, made Holyfield respond to him. Far more frequently did Bird dominate the action at center of the ring than were the occasions when Holyfield was able to get him to the ropes, make him square up, and fight his fight. But it did happen sometimes. It was a good fight also. Fun fight to watch. It was a fun fight. One guy boxing, the other guy trying to slug it out. That's what makes for good boxing matches. Holyfield was frustrated throughout the fight, but he kept fighting. That speaks a lot about Evander Holyfield. Harold Letterman's final scorecard, 117-111, favoring Chris Bird. That means nine rounds to three in favor of Bird. So Harold gave Holyfield the first, the tenth, and the eleventh, and all the remaining rounds to Bird. Now you've heard George Foreman and Larry Merchant, and I'll chime in with them, saying none of us will be surprised if the official scorecards are something considerably closer than Harold Letterman's 117-111. That in the entertainment business is what we call a tease. <laughs> but Holyfield ended a lot of those rounds really tough. Last ten seconds trying to steal the rounds like Muhammad Ali used to do his Bird's corner set. All right, George, let's find out who won the fight. Jimmy Lennon Jr. with the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, John Stewart scores about 116 to 112. Judges Eugene Grant and Steve Weisfeld both score the bout 117 to 111. All three in favor of the winner of the IBF Heavyweight Championship of the World, Chris Bird. the same fight Harold Letterman saw and Chris Bird gets his well-deserved victory.